Hello everybody, welcome to this session, live from my living room. Um, this is practical DevOps approaches and best practices for continuous integration. And um, I need to add also for continuous delivery because of course, eventually we want to deliver. Um, this will be basically a collection of best practices and recommendations how to set up your development infrastructure um, for BTP extension development. So we are going to discuss Git branches, um, continuous integration, continuous delivery, um, so pipelines and pipeline jobs. And of course, we are going to discuss transports um, over a two, three, four, I don't know, whatever crazy stuff you guys are doing and tier system landscape. Um, after this session, the goal is um, that you can go back um, to your project, to your team and set up not one, but two solid CI, CD pipelines for your extension development that actually work. Yeah, so you're going to be the hero of the team. Let's set the stage first. How do we move source code to production? So on the left-hand side, I have this clumsy icon for this is the source code. On the right-hand side, you see the, the factory. This is our production system. and in the old days, um, yeah, maybe in your first IT job you ever had, um, or at least in the first IT job I ever had, I had the source code on my machine. I was working on it, and whenever I thought the stuff is good enough, I just copied it over to a server, restarted the application server, and things were live. Yeah, that was really cool, but also pretty risky. Yeah? So, of course, there's a lot of problems with this approach. So, there were no tests and no safety net at all. Yeah? So, if things w went wrong all the time, because also stuff seemed to work on my machine, but that doesn't necessarily mean it also works um, on the productive server. Yeah? Um, another problem was um, this approach doesn't scale uh, with an increasing number of developers. Yeah? If a second or third developer joins the team, what are you going to do? Um, share the file system or um, share the sources via email? So, yeah, I mean, I've done all that. That's not good. Um, with bugs in production, you never knew when this actually happened. There was no version to go back to. You, you, you just didn't know what happened. Yeah? And there's a couple more. And, the baseline is, and you have probably guessed it before I started this long speech, um, um, this is not how we're supposed to do it in um, enterprise or in professional development. So um, in the SAP context, we have, we have overcome those problems, of course. And I just want to s describe shortly um, how we did that in the different areas. In the in the first, um, in the first um, area that I would like to cover, that I would like to call cl the cloud native space, um, we have um, we can do concurrent development. Uh, we solve certain integration problems by the use of Git and the various Git flavors. So Git, GitHub, GitLab, um, all these things help you to integrate on a source code level, um, and to, of course, in the first place, to store to serve as a common um, repository for the whole team. In addition to that, we have continuous integration and continuous delivery. These are agile practices. Continuous integration is the practice to, um, or it requires the developer to, um, to, to check in their changes as often as possible. And those changes then are um, validated in an automated way with what we would call a CI pipeline. Um, and continuous integration takes this concept a step further. Um, the validation here is extended in a way that um, we actually have a, something that we can potentially ship. Yeah? And all this has become part of this larger um, DevOps cultural shift that we've seen in recent years. Um, and that is really also helping developers to, 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 um, to de develop in style. I will, uh, DevOps, I know DevOps in the, is in the title, but I will just um, yeah, focus more on, on the development part in, in this presentation. Um, 
What's going on on the ABAP side? Of course, um, also there, um, professional development happens, um, um, great software comes into production. So how do we solve, for instance, the integration problem here? Um, so the integration problem is different on the ABAP side because it actually doesn't exist in that in that sense. Yeah? So we have locked objects, there's never two, three, four developers working on the same piece. Yeah? And of course, when you when you um, when you want to put um, things into production, we have transports, and we transport our um, our artifacts, our software through um, a system landscape. And, and on each stage of the system landscape, we validate um, different aspects of the software, so that in the end, in production, we have something rock solid. Now we've shown at last year's tech ed already how to connect. Um, those two aspects where we have a um, continuous integration pro uh, process that takes care of validating the change and giving feedback to the developer and a very control governance heavy process um, that contains transports. So that is, if you want to Google it, I think it was XP 280, so it's available on YouTube. Um, and Today I don't want to repeat this hands-on. I just want to go over a couple of aspects um, in the setup our customers have been asking me for again and again. So in this session, on the one hand side, I will start with Git because that's, yeah, for developers always very interesting. This is where we live. Um, so what you see here will look very familiar if you're working with feature branches, for instance. Um, that means we have a main branch where we have stable software changes that are good enough to be put into production. And in those feature branches that are forked off um, the main branch, there's work in progress. Yeah? So the development team working on new features is usually working in feature branches here. You're also seeing that um, I'm following a certain naming convention here. So the feature branches are named feature minus number that will come in handy later. Um, there's also other ways to organize your code in Git. Yeah? So uh, feature branches is not the only thing you can do. You can also do trunk-based development. But for this session, I want to focus on feature branching also because I think it's way easier to implement. Yeah? Um, just one thing to keep in mind, your feature branches should not be... Um, yeah, should not run too long. Yeah, so feature branches that are um, open for a month or two and don't get merged. That's not what what you should do when you're practicing continuous integration. Yeah? You need to merge rather often into the main line. All right. So I promised a demo. Let's go to the demo part. How does that look in Git? So I'm using GitHub here. You can also use um, um, GitLab or Bitbucket or Azure repositories. That's all fine. Um, Terminology might differ, but everything else might be the same. And I'm using a, a sample application from a tutorial that we have recently published for um, acceptance testing using WDI5. But honestly, it's for the sake of this demo, it's not so interesting what this application does. From a CI CD perspective, it's important to see that um, we have an MTA YAML in here, so we need an MTA builder tool for, for, to build the software. And um, also it's an um, application following the cloud application programming model. The branching that I've shown earlier, um, you will also see here. So you see the main branch and you see a couple of feature branches um, that the team obviously is working on. Right. So this is one hand side, this is source code. Um, let's go to the other end of our process and this is the system landscape. Um, I, I'm looking at this landscape visualization in SAP Cloud Transport Management. Yeah, so I have created a very simple dev, QA and prod three tier um, landscape that is probably familiar. And um, this is eventually the landscape that we want to run the delivery through. All right. Now, of course, you all know that there needs to be some glue in between. Yeah. So how do the sources get into um, this system landscape? That's, I would say, of course, <laughs> continuous integration pipelines will come in here. Yeah. So and in the session, we're going to look at two different types of pipelines and two different specific pipelines. I will start with an integration pipeline. 
Um, the job of the integration pipeline is to fetch and build and validate every change that gets pushed to a feature branch. Yeah? So um, whenever a new feature branch is created or a new change gets on top of that, we need to integrate that. That is meant for the developers um, to get fast feedback. They need to know, can I continue work or did I introduce a new problem that I need to, need to fix right away? No? So then let us, yeah, let's do that first. Let's go to the browser again. Let's look at the continuous integration pipeline in SAP continuous integration and delivery. If you have not seen this uh, application on BTP, this is basically the landing page where we have a list of jobs that have been configured. And very handy um, is we already find an integration job here. Yeah. And it's not an integration job because I named it like this. It's an integration job because it builds off the feature branches. And you see here, it does not use a fixed branch, um, but it uses a, uh, the naming convention, a, a wildcard feature minus asterisk. So anything that comes onto feature branches gets built. Let's look at the content of this integration job. Um, you see, yeah, don't be surprised, it has been run before, yeah? I'm not unprepared, I, I, I tried this out before. Let's scroll down. Yeah, let's look at the stages. Stages are basically the bigger blocks um, a job consists of and without, and this does not have too many surprises, of course, at the beginning. We have a build stage, we need to build it. We're using as a build tool, um, the MTA builder, um, we have linting, and this is, I think, very basic. Um, a stage that I'm not using is additional unit tests and acceptance. I know you're all writing unit tests like crazy, so you can execute them also in the service. Yeah? Please, please write unit tests. Um, the acceptance stage, for, from a time perspective, I just turned them off because they run pretty long. Um, acceptance tests work in a way that you can deploy to a um, to, to, to Cloud Foundry, to a Cloud Foundry space, and then run WDI 5 tests against it. Again, I'm skipping that for today. Instead, I'm having a stage that's called compliance, and we're using SonarCube here um, to, um, to check for yeah, code quality, yeah? typical codes, uh, code smells, um, potential vulnerabilities, stuff like that. No. You see here that most of this or all the stages that are configured here are meant to give developer information that they developers information that they need to continue work. No. Um, that also means we don't have anything in the release stage, so no deployment to a production space, no upload to SAP Cloud Transport Management. Instead, what I have here, what I also recommend is to use build notifications. So I'm using SAP Alert Notification Service to receive all kinds of events from this job. Once this job is executed, it creates events in SAP Alert Notification Service. And there I have a filter to, um, to send me all error events. Yeah? So whenever pipeline is wrong, I'm getting an email. You can also use other channels like um, Probably more realistic is a Teams Slack channel or um, a Teams Microsoft Teams channel, stuff like this. All right, so this is the integration job and it builds everything in feature branches. So, all right, let's get back to the presentation. Um, there's the second pipeline, the delivery pipeline, or that's the one we're gonna create in a minute. So the delivery job that I'm gonna create will build everything off the main branch. You might have guessed that, yeah? So, and here we're also going to use um, SAP Continuous Integration Delivery for the build and for the testing. Um, and um, at the end of this, we're gonna activate the release um, stage to upload our build result to SAP Cloud Transportation Management Service. No? So let us do that. Um, the validation is the same, so I'm being very lazy. I have this integration job. I'm just gonna hit this copy button to copy the integration job and adjust it so we have a good delivery job. Yeah, I will name it appropriately, delivery. 
Um, it builds off the same repository. Yeah? So this is again the basic information that we need for the job. But it will build off a different branch. Yeah? So not feature minus asterisk, but we will build the main branch and we will use the same pipeline template for cloud application programming model based application development. All right, let's look at the stages. As I said, I will leave most things on here. Unit tests, compliance, release. So this is now where the interesting stuff happens. So let's turn on the upload to cloud transport management. We will need a node name now. And if you remember, I have this dev node here, not the death node, but the dev node um, configured in SAP cloud transport management. Then dev will have a service key. I prepared that. So that is something that you can create um, in a cloud TMS instance, create a service key, put it into SAP Continuous Integration and Delivery, manage it here as a credential. Done that before, because I'm clumsy, I will do something wrong here. All right, so that is basically it. I will just change this custom tag because now it is a delivery pipeline and I'm filtering for that as well in SAP Alert. SAP's alert notification service. All right, let's create this. We have now the delivery job building on main, no builds yet. Let's change that because this is a demo. All right, now let's go back to GitHub where our development team is currently yeah, fighting against the clock. So they have this big delivery date um, and one pull request um, is still missing. So one thing I would like to add here is please use those pull requests to discuss. Yeah? Um, the, the main branch should be protected. Um, don't let ever anybody push directly to the main branch. It should be protected. Um, this feature exists in all these um, Git flavors um, that we support. And also in pull requests, a lot of good things happen for a development team. So there's a lot of discussing the feature and, and understanding the feature for the team. Um, there's a lot of exchange um, of opinions. There's a lot of um, developing a common um, development style. So that is, that is really important to use on pull request. I'm going to merge this. Yes, let's give it a good title. Zack. Confirm the merge. And I'm going to delete this branch because I don't need it anymore. And now in SAP Continuous Integration and Delivery, we should see a job starting. And actually, it starts. Real nice. Um, this job will run with all the content that we configured. This job will run 10, 12 minutes. So we're not going to wait for that. Um, instead, I'm going to switch to, I said I was prepared. Um, to a job that I run prev ran previously, yeah? earlier this week, I guess. Yeah? Let's look at those three builds. Let's pick the second one. And here you see the same stages and how the job ran successfully through these stages. Yeah? So build, compliance, release, everything done. And um, as I said, at the end of the release stage, we upload the change to uh, SAP Cloud Transport Management. So let's just pick this so I can filter it easier. I pick this commit. I go to SAP Cloud Transport Management, hit the transport requests view. I filter. And I see, uh, it was also about exclamation marks. Um, and I see a build result uploaded to the dev node and transport management and the transport management service. And now I can use all kinds of um, change management tools like SAP Solution Manager, SAP Cloud ALM, or also um, SAP Cloud Transport Management itself to move this change from development to QA um, to, to production eventually. All right. all right, let's go back to the slides once more. I just want to summarize what you've seen. Yeah? So we have looked at um, the branching setup in Git and how the branches correspond with a continuous with an integration pipeline and the main branch corresponding to a delivery pipeline. We have seen that the delivery pipeline basically consists of two tools. Uh, SAP Continuous Integration will do the validation, hand over to SAP Cloud Transport Management, and then 
we have all kinds of other tools to move those changes from development to QA and to production. All right, so that's it for now. I think we can go over to the questions. All right, do you have a good example for WDI5? Yes, a good example, um, I, we even have a tutorial. Um, let's go back here. So let's, let's show this. We have a great tutorial, it's just new, from our colleague Sarah Lendle, um, that shows you how to um, create WDI5 tests and run them in, the, in SAP Continuous Integration and Delivery and transport that over your landscape. Um, then, what else do we have? Is there any tutorial to implement CI-CD in our business application studio projects? Um, not yet, not that I'm aware of, um, but I'm happy to take this request um, and put it in the backlog. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's 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 do that. That's good. Um, then another question: GitHub will be used for all the projects. Dev uh, GitHub will be used for all the projects developed in Bus and BTP. You can use GitHub. Um, we're using, I, I use GitHub here in this example. You can also use GitLab, Bitbucket, server and cloud, um, Azure um, repositories. Um, not sure whether I mentioned GitLab, but GitLab you can also use. Next question. Do we have a cloud native ABAP DevOps roadmap? So I think we're working on that. So there's a lot of discussion going around. Um, what we're going to offer in that space. Um, so stay tuned. I'm not aware of anything that is on an official, official um, roadmap level at the moment, but um, for sure there's gonna be something. Then we have one. Question is, sometimes I'm unable to create a repository from BAS to GitHub. I have to manually create a repository in GitHub and connect with Bus. So yes, I think this is this is how it works from my perspective. Yeah. So um, um, you're creating the project in GitHub, and um, and then you're starting to author it in Business Application Studio. So this is you don't create your repository from um, the Business Application Studio. Oh, that's a tough one. How do you manage the version of the MTA in the MTA descriptor to increment for each new release from the CI CD? So I assume, but I'm not an expert here. Um, I automate stuff. I don't necessarily know what I'm automating. So I assume that you change um, the version in your MTA descriptor using your editor, your, your IDE your authoring tool, and you will be fine. Then we have another one. Um, has the GCTS tool been tested to work with other Git providers such as Azure DevOps? So far I have mostly seen it working with GitHub. Anything that we need to take care of if we don't use GitHub? Actually, I cannot comment on that. I don't know the roadmap from the GCTS tooling. I know there's a lot of, um, a lot of plans, but I, I cannot um, precisely answer this one. Sorry about that. All right, so I think then we're through. If there are not more questions, then thank you very much. Has been a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of the tech ad. Have fun, bye. <laughs>